Whitman mold temperature controllers are built for exact temperature control of the mold and have proven their quality for many years. The new color display provides even easier monitoring of the process. Here we have one of Whitman's Tempera Plus D TCUs and today I'm going to go over how to operate this unit, give you important terminology to remember, and give you basic TCU knowledge that the user should know when using our control panel. When starting the unit, you will switch the main switch on first and wait until the software boots up. The software boots up automatically and it isn't necessary to press a button on this start screen. After this approximate 120 second wait, you will be brought to the main screen and have the ability to press the power button to turn on the desired temperature control circuit. Now while we're waiting for the software to boot up, I'm going to demonstrate how to attach the Y strainer to the device. We have a lot of customers coming back with questions about how to attach this piece. So located at the bottom left corner in the back is where the Y strainer gets attached like so. You want to look for this image here with the arrow face towards the TCU. When twisting the Y unit in, make sure that the piece is face downwards like shown. Now we will make our way back to the control panel. By clicking on the field, you can adjust the value of the circuit. If an invalid value is entered, then an information line will appear beneath the input field, giving possible values. At the top, you have the header field. Within this zone, you can switch the circuit on and off. This symbol here shows that the unit is filling and rinsing the relevant circuit. There are four different status displays which you can find on page 35 in your operating manual. You can also tell what state the device is in based on the color of the tool symbol here. Gray would show that the circuit is switched off, green would show that the circuit is switched on, and that the actual temperature of the medium corresponds to the prescribed desired temperature. Blue would show that the circuit is on and that the actual temperature of the medium is lower than the prescribed desired temperature. And lastly, the red tool would show that the circuit is on and that the actual temperature of the medium is warmer than the prescribed desired temperature. This row shows the actual temperature of the circuit, while the two rows below this display the selectable values to be defined as required. The last row includes the fast function selection buttons, which allows for quick changes required for production methods. Now we are going to make our way to the temperature button, which allows us to adjust the actual value and setting desired and tolerance values. This first tab gives us an overview of the actual and desired values for the three temperatures per circuit. Only the desired values can be set here, but not the plus and minus tolerances as these are set in the individual areas of relevant sensors. You can also change to internal or external regulations, but keep in mind this is only possible if the optional external sensor is attached. By pressing the internal, external, or the return label tabs, you can view all of the setting values for these sensors. These tabs allow you to change the desired value as well as the plus and minus tolerances. And then the last tab is the FN set file, which allows you to adjust the following functions. You can change your fast function selection buttons with the first three rows. The optional direct cooling feature can be adjusted in this row. And lastly, when we scroll down a little, we can get to the fill with DSP row which is only equipped with the pressure devices. And now we will head back and get to the pressure and flow section, which is responsible for the actual value and setting monitored desired value and tolerance values. This device is equipped with two pressure sensors and one flow measurement path. However, keep in mind your unit may have more or less depending on your device. This first tab gives us an overview of the actual and desired values for pressure and flow for each circuit. The input pressure is measured at the pump outlet and is the highest pressure that is achieved in this mold circuit. The pump pressure is the difference between the input pressure and the system pressure. This basically shows the value by which the pump really increases the pressure. The system pressure is the pressure before the pump. This value is adjusted to the relevant temperature to keep this value always slightly above the boundary between water and vapor. And lastly, the flow is determined using measurement methods in accordance with the temperature. Within the pump tab, the pump pressure can be monitored in order to recognize constrictions or pump damage. You can adjust the reference value as well as the plus and minus tolerance from the reference value. And lastly, 
The flow tab allows users to simultaneously monitor flow quantity and the pump pressure offers the greatest possible process safety and serves to allow early recognition of pump war and constrictions in cooling channels. You can adjust the reference value as well as the plus and minus tolerance from the reference value. Now we will head back and get into the settings menu where you can see or modify the basic device settings. When you first press the settings button, you will be prompted to enter a user password, which is 8383, and then confirm with this button. Keep in mind if you hit the back button and exit the settings menu, you will no longer have user authorization, which is shown with this symbol. The first tab gives us an overview of some important device data that you should tell our customer services if you make telephone inquiries. At the bottom, you can also adjust the language settings, which is the only thing you can do without entering a user password. And then, just below that, you can adjust the desired units you would wish to use. Within the timer tab, we can set up a starting and stopping time for each of seven days. This section is fairly self-explanatory, but let's say for example you wanted to start on Monday at 5.30 a.m. and stop on Tuesday at 10.10 p.m. To start on Monday, press this button and input 5.30. Then to stop on Tuesday, press this button and input 22.10. Afterwards, make sure you hit this button to activate the timer. And now you will find the timer symbol activated next to both power buttons. The date and time tab allows you to set the current date and time in different display formats. The display tab is where you can adjust various settings that are displayed on the main screen. The first option is to change from a numerical display to a di graphic display. The display for the actual values shows a bar chart of the set internal temperature with a plus and minus range of 10 degrees Celsius. The next two selectable fields allow you to pick from 11 different displays for your main screen. At the bottom you can adjust your fast function selection buttons. By selecting any of the three fast function buttons, you can select from seven different functions for your unit to perform. You can find a description for each of the functions in section 8.5. If you select the statistics function, it will automatically change on your main page. Click on this icon to access the diagram of the temperature control unit where the following values for the selected diagram are shown. Click on the temp history tab to view the temperature values for the internal temperature, return temperature, and the temperature of the external sensor as curves. By clicking on the pre-flow history tab, you can view the pressure flow values for the flow pressure, pump pressure, and flow as curves. Navigate to the setup tab to adjust the start and end times of the display duration for temperature and pressure flow. If you scroll down a little, this is where you can activate auto scaling of the Y limits of the diagram for temperature, pressure, and flow. If auto scaling is switched off, then the Y limits for the diagram can be selected and set by the user himself. At the bottom of the list, this is also where you can activate the USB export of this data. Now we will make our way back to the main menu and enter our password again in the settings file to get to the next tab. Basic interface settings can be seen on the COM settings screen of the interface. Pressing on the desired buttons takes you to that input area. Pages 54 to 60 of your manual will get into more depth about specific instructions to follow when connecting your machines. Within the IP tab, it is only necessary to set the IP address if the temperature control unit is connected to a Battenfeld machine with an Ethernet cable. After using page 61 of your manual to input the information, you must then restart the device in order to save the data. The service tab offers various selection pages with different settings for the device and control can be viewed by anybody. Keep in mind that modifications can only be made by Whitman service personnel, which requires a service password. However, the user password that is given in the manual does not allow access to adjust the following menus. Within the times menu, you have the ability to change the start tolerance monitoring, delay tolerance alarm, initial filling, refilling, total refilling, 10 hours, overfilling time, pump run when refilling, pump run time after switching off, rinsing when switched on, exchange cycle, exchange medium, and empty by suction. To get more in depth about these settings, please see page 63 for detailed explanation. 
Likewise, the maximum values menu lets us adjust the set internal and external, set to safety temperature, maximum input pressure, minimum system pressure, and heating ramp. Then within the next tab you can set the horn, inverted alarm contact, save on status, reset to factory settings, and change password. Pages 64 to 67 will also get in more depth about these settings with a detailed explanation for making adjustments for your unit. The operating hours menu shows all operating hours, next service, operating hours in different temperature ranges, and switching cycles for all valves. Next we get to the error buffer menu. By pressing the update button, you will return the error buffer to its current status. The middle tab is used in resetting your device, however, error buffer can only be reset by the technical customer service tab. This data can be stored on a USB stick as necessary with the last tab within this menu. Then if we switch to the next menu, we can view errors that have occurred with the error number, date, time, and clear text. Now we're going to make our way back to the functions menu. Various functions or operating methods are available depending on the device type and device configuration. Within this menu, you can adjust the cool stop function, cooling to safety temperature, suction empty stop, regulation to set to, exchange medium, direct cooling, enhanced cooling, and leak stoppage. Then within the second tab, you can adjust the cooling water bypass and the input lock which will require 153 to be entered in the password field that pops up. In-depth descriptions for these features are given on pages 73 to 76 of your manual. And this pretty much sums up how to operate the control panel for our Tempro D TCUs. Prior to shutting down the unit, make sure to press one of the fast function icons to cool down the unit. It is possible to damage the unit if the operator does not lower the temperature before shutting down the device. We would like to emphasize how important it is to follow our maintenance instructions starting on page 77 when operating this unit. There is a chart at the bottom of page 78 which clearly outlines what we request and how often it should be done throughout the year. These instructions will help to understand how to operate your control panel and to find more information on the unit please take a look at either our operating manual or our training manual. And if necessary, our service technicians are always available and ready to answer your call.